Hey everyone, so today we will be painting this beautiful green landscape with watercolors and there will be a large tree with grassland surrounding it with a pathway. Okay, so let's get to the material list first. So you will need a watercolor paper. This is an F5 sized watercolor paper. So for watercolors, I prefer a minimum of 200 gsm thickness and above and I have sticked it on an acrylic sheet with a washi tape and of course you will need artist grade watercolors so these are my 2v watercolor collection here and then you will need a palette or any smooth surface to mix your colors and some round brushes of size 12 000, 000 which is for detailing and size 6 then a tissue or a cloth and a jar of water so let's start the painting so I have made a rough sketch of my painting and I am starting with the sky so for sky I am applying a very light wash of cobalt blue and I am leaving some spaces for the clouds also you should not apply it on the bushes and tree while using watercolors unlike acrylic and gouache we start from the very light color and sometimes leaving the white color of paper as such is very important in watercolor paintings. So I have completed the entire sky with a very light wash of cobalt blue. Now I am applying a bit darker wash of cobalt blue at the bottom part of the sky. I want that area a bit more darker. So next I am painting the bushes and the leaves of the tree. For that I have mixed lemon yellow and tree green. So you can also use a sap green instead. So for watercolors we always start from the very light wash. So I am filling the tree also with the same color. So you can see I am making the edges of the trees and bushes with irregular shapes just by tapping my brush. So this is very important to define the shape of your tree. So we have applied our first layer moving on to the second layer the second layer is going to be just a uh, tree green uh, no more lemon yellow in it so i have mixed a lot of water to the tree green and i am adding the shadows to the bushes and tree so you can see i am using a tapping method here just tapping my brushes to give that leaf structure to the tree so at each layer we are defining the shape of the bundles of the tree by adding more shadows to it and you can also see that i am leaving some space here and there between my tabs so that the previous layer show up through the next layer okay and uh, by tapping i mean i don't mean dots we are not adding perfect dots here we just add irregular dots just by tapping our detailing brush and the center part of my tree is a bit dark there is more shadow there so you can see the taps are very closer there and I define each bundle by adding shadows and leaving some highlights there. So make sure that you are not adding taps all over the tree. You can see I am defining the shape here just by adding shadows where the bundles overlap each other. So before starting to paint a tree, you should understand from where the light is coming and where should be the shadows and what are the shades of your tree. So for my convenience, I add few dots and define the shape and then fill in with shadows. So the right part of my tree is going to have a bit more smaller bundles. So I'm defining it by leaving some spaces for the bundles, the highlights of the bundles. When you see a tree painting, you might think it is a very complicated one to paint. It is so detailed, but it is not like that. The tapping method we are using is very relaxing one. And it is so amazing to see that how each layer brings life to a tree.
Okay, I'm done with the second layer. Moving to the third layer. It is also going to be the tree green. But this time it is going to be a bit more concentrated one. I've added more pigment to the water than the previous layer this time. So it shows a bit more greeny. And I'm adding the shadows again. So while adding the shadows at each step, I'm leaving uh, some of the previous layer as such. So that it shows off through the next layer. Again, I am concentrating on the center part of the tree as I have already told you it's going to be a bit darker. So for entire tree bundles, I use this tapping method and it really worked for me. I love this technique and I love how the bundles are transforming while adding shadows by this technique. You can see I'm focusing on the bundles, I'm focusing on the highlights and I add the shadows. Okay, then the fourth layer so this layer is going to be the last layer of our greens so don't underestimate that it's a black color that i am applying it's not a black color i have mixed a very concentrated tree green color this time i have added a very much of pigment and a very little of water and just adding simple shadows here and there i'm not covering entire shadows so this step give a more contrast to your tree. So I have forgot to paint some of the bushes which were supposed to be behind the tree. So I'm just filling in them with our first color. The color I have used for the tree. And for, I'm using the same process here. Then I mix a bit more concentrated tree green color and adding shadows. I'm simply doing the steps that we have done so far. And for the trunk, I have mixed yellow ochre with burnt umber. And the second layer is just burnt umber. And now I'm adding some branches with black color. So I'm adding branches between the bundles of the tree. Very thin branches. So simply add some branches where you feel very empty.
and I am using the same black to add shadow to the upper half of the trunk and that's it we are done with the tree now for the path I have used yellow ochre so here also a very light wash of yellow ochre and I am filling in with that color so before adding the details for the path I have also filled the entire grass so for the grass also I have choose the same color pattern of the trees and bushes so I have mixed some lemon yellow with tree green and applied a very light wash for the entire grass area also to define the grass I'm adding some grass like structure at the edge now I am detailing the path so for this layer I have mixed some yellow ochre with a little bit of burnt umber so I'm just adding some shadows and structures to the ground with that color and in the next step I'm adding details to the grassland so for this layer I have used tree green a very light wash of tree green and I'm adding grass lines so while detailing the grass you should be very careful that the grass which is far from our site will be very small and very less detailed and those are so close to us are to be detailed and should be larger in size so as I move down I make my grass larger and I am not filling the entire area with these lines I'm leaving some space so that the previous layer shows up and it give a highlight to my ground So for the next layer it's also tree green I've added more pigment and made it a bit darker so I'm adding the shadows I have added the shadows uh, under the tree and the area which is very close to the path and some details here and there So you can see I'm adding very less details to the upper part of my foreground. So I'm not going to add the next layer that we have done for the tree, the very pigmented layer. So it will make our foreground a bit more contrast and very darker. So I don't want that. I want my foreground to be a bit more lighter than the tree. Okay, now I have taken a bit more burnt umber and I'm adding a very definite shape to my pathway. I'm adding a little more shadows where there are grasses overlapping to the pathway. And that was the final step. So let's peel the tape and here is our beautiful painting. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.